So for our new thing, and if you saw the title, you probably know already know what it is, or if you are looking at my T-shirt. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem, the uh, the Seth Rogen Turtles. <laughs> the, uh, you know, I, I did not notice until just before the show that I grabbed an image of the 16-month 2024 calendar, but that actually is appropriate because I... I have a hard time believing that this movie was made because somebody had a burning desire to tell a Ninja Turtles story. This was made to keep that licensing machine going. Yeah, uh, indeed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, judging judging from this movie, I would say you're probably probably <laughs> correct on that. <laughs> yep. Um, uh, so, I personally okay. So, just as we get started, <clears throat> I personally do not care about spoiling this movie. We we both have thoughts about this movie that I think would be hard to express without spoiling this movie. Indeed, uh, I, I think that the non-spoiler review we would have, and we talked a little bit about this, is that it has a very cool premise mm -hmm. that is uh, smothered under a pile of Seth Rogen. <laughs> yes. That is that is an accurate description. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so to to get into the, I guess we should get into the meat of this. Um, yep. So uh, the basically this is the origin, a new origin story for the turtles, which you know we we already have several of those already. I don't know why we need another origin story. Um. Because otherwise, everyone's going to wonder uh, what happened to April if you don't establish that it's a new universe. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, yeah. So, um, so it sets up where the the turtles are are what, what 14, 15, 15, I think, right? maybe even thirteen. Yeah, uh, they're very young, um, and they and they act like it too. Yeah, I I would say that that's this movie's unique. Uh, calling card in terms of tur uh, tr uh, turtles premises yeah they they definitely act more like teenage boys than than the other adaptations which um i i would say is 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 a bug not a feature <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it's something where i i see why they would want to do it like that by the way how, how bad is the echo oh no you're good okay Maybe I ought to move to a different room of the house, but since I'm on my laptop, you won't even know I'm doing it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Through the power of movie magic. Yes. <laughs> anyway, um, it's like the, the base idea of skewing them younger and I, actually what I would say is that this is more than any of the other Turtles media I've consumed, a coming of age identity story. Yeah. And it has a premise that I actually really like and wish that had been done more seriously, which is uh, the Ninja Turtles are, it's, it's basically they've ripped off X-Men, kind of like we were suspecting during one of our, uh, during one of our trailer reactions to this one. Yeah. Yeah. Then uh, it, it, it's, uh, yeah, because you had um, the, because you have the villain in the, in the story, uh, Superfly. It was very much just a insert. Of, it's just Magneto as a giant fly guy. Yep, voiced yeah. by uh, um, uh, was I, it Ice Cube? Uh, Ice Cube, yeah. And I actually really liked his take on Superfly. Like, yeah. I, I kind of liked how he would like do like the buzzing sound effects occasionally. Yeah, <laughs> it, it must have been fun to record with him. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I uh, I I would say Ice Cube is uh, underrated as an actor. I think because he's everything I've seen him in, he's been pretty good. Yeah, yeah, he's just very he's just very solid at what he does. Yeah, but um, uh, yeah, yeah. So so the, the, in this take on things, the, the it opens up with a scene that's actually pretty darn serious if you get down to it, which makes the rest of the movie strange. Yeah, yeah, you've got um, uh, 
the TCR uh, TCRI commandos raiding uh, Baxter Stockman's house because he's doing all the experiments with the with the mutagen or the ooze and uh, ooze in, ooze ooze. Oh, God, that scene. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, so yeah, and then I I can't I, I can't the the that scene happens so fast. Did Stockman get get offed? Yes, uh, he died in the explosion that was caused okay. by the raid. And so Superfly took his brothers and sisters and went to make a uh, separate society of mutants. Right. And it's it's a bunch of them. I mean, it, it's like you got Bebop and Rocksteady, Wingnut, um, Wingnut Mondo Gecko, um, uh, it Scumbug. It wasn't Raymon. It was like it was some sort of Manta Ray. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Grateful Eight. Okay. Um, and then um, I can't remember who the other ones were. There's but... like Genghis Toad, who they made fun Geng of. Made oh, right, Genghis Toad. Name. Yeah, Genghis Toad, that's right. Uh, but uh, yeah, and then uh, of course the, that same ooze was what goes down into the sewers uh, and mutates the turtles and Splinter, which completely changes their backstory. Just complete, they just completely wiped out like how Splinter was, uh, you know, the pet rat of, of ninja master Hamato Yoshi, and then Yoshi getting killed by the Shredder, and you know, then getting lost in the sewers, and then finding the, the baby turtles, and you know, yeah, or in my opinion, after seeing a few run throughs of different turtle variants, I think I prefer it where. Splinter is Hamato Yoshi because it makes much more sense of how he's able to teach them to be good ninjas. Yeah, I, I would agree with that too. Yeah, although it, it um, although that of course it, it isn't, it doesn't jive. It's not that's not the original vision of Eastman and Laird comic books. But eh, yeah, um, it, it also explains why the. Okay, so. I'm about to be pedantic about a children's movie about talking monsters. <laughs> <clears throat> but there's like a verisimilitude to it, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. realistically, if you... Like I'm imagining my cats. If I made my cats suddenly super intelligent, it's not like they suddenly know how to be human. Right. They, they would... Um, they'd probably sound like Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> Yeah, or yeah, like they would, they would, you know, it's not like they suddenly know English because they've mutated, right? Yeah. So, I mean, honestly, if anything, uh, all the turtles should speak with the same Japanese accent that Hamada Yoshi did in the '90s cartoon or the '80s cartoon. Yeah, that's true. But though they they sound like uh, New Yorkers. <laughs> yep. Which, uh, okay, that that's that's I'm going to stop being pedantic about it. Okay. But. Uh, <laughs> It feels strange to have a rat, uh, or this this rat. It makes no sense for him to decide to get into ninjutsu or to even be good at it. Yeah, and and the, and how he gets good at it doesn't work. By the way, like you can't you can't just watch videos of martial arts and karate and then become good at karate. It, it just doesn't work that way. No, because like th this version of, of Splinter is played by Jackie Chan, mm -hmm. because I guess to Hollywood the Japanese and the Chinese are interchangeable. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> um, yeah. Actually, you know what? You know what? That actually fits because there's nothing Japanese about this guy. He is just cultural appropriation. He learned it all in music or in YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so it fits. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, and and then um, of course the the turtles, you know, they don't like being in this. Of course, Splinter is very protective of them. Like he doesn't he he doesn't like humans because there was a there was an incident where they went uh they went above ground when they were when he was like younger and they were still kind of young mm -hmm. or you know they were like babies and then all the humans were freaked out by them and so so now splinter doesn't like humans yep yeah he, it's he did make from the sense. start considering that uh he was a rat being ab abused by humans to start with but definitely not afterwards right 
Yeah. And uh, and so the 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 turtles want to you know they want to go explore the human world, and so they're doing all this you know they they go grocery shopping and AKA looting. Yes. <laughs> and uh, and then they stop off briefly at a at an outdoor movie screening of of Ferris Bueller, which isn't animated. It's just no. live action Ferris Bueller plopped into the movie. Which I, I hate when animated stuff does that. Because it, it yeah. just doesn't make any sense at all. The, the only one I'll give that to is Wally, because uh, they were going for enough photo reels and that it kind of jives, but. Yeah, it just doesn't even work. Then, those. Yeah. Make, yeah. Make animators animate again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and so uh, then one of their nights when they're out, uh, they, oh, they, yeah. they they make a point of when they go on these nighttime excursions, I, as they point out, Splinter doesn't know how long it takes to go to the bodega. So, so they like milk it for as much time as they can. Right, yeah. And uh, and then uh, then Splinter figures out, what, you know, finds out what they're doing and then grounds them, but then they get, you know, they 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 serve out their punishment and then they're on the the roof goofing off with uh, with a watermelon and uh, and uh, the ninja star that they throw at the watermelon flies off it and then it hits uh, April's uh, helmet. That's yep. when they meet April. And Leonardo immediately falls in love. And this is actually so. Th- so this is where Leonardo had been like, okay. Just quick sidebar. I think everyone is reasonably in character. Mm, yeah. They're all kind of more extreme. Uh, I, I think I likened this to what would happen if Michelangelo was the only source for <laughs> like, like, like imagine somebody decided to make a movie about the turtles lives and Michelangelo was the only one who agreed to talk with them. And so, you know, <laughs> Everybody is like his description, right? Oh yeah, Raphael, he's kind of violent. I might be a little unhinged and have some emotional problems now that I think about it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm just kind of the goof, the lovable goofball who everybody likes. And Donatello is just a dork. And Leonardo's got a stick up his butt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, but um, it, but yeah, but yeah, like Leonardo was actually kind of like. I think you were you pointed this out when we were watching it that he uh, you can kind of empathize with him because he's just he's the one who's trying to keep them from like getting into trouble too much and then yeah. you know when you're a kid you're Michelangelo when you're an angry teen you become uh, Raphael and then when you're an adult you become Leonardo because you realize there are bills to pay <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, but um, but yeah, then he he sees April and and falls madly in love with her. Which I I'm okay. Can we can we stop doing this? Having one of the turtles fall in love with April. I'm I'm getting really. I, I mean, it, it's it's weird. Uh, you, you can never go anywhere with it. Yeah, like because I mean, so, like like the 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 2012 series. It was Donatello. Donatello falls in love with April, and then the Michael Bay movies. It's Michelangelo, and then this movie. It's Leonardo. Oh, I'd stayed away from the Michael Bay movies. I didn't realize they'd gone the Shelley route. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They did. Oof. Yeah, it, it, and it was creepy too. <laughs> Very creepy. Um, but, but yeah. Oh, oh, I'm also just gonna say, okay. In Leo's case, I guess it's because like. You know, it's the first girl he's ever talked to. Mm. But I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I, it's kind of the same issue as that Scrooge movie I watched last year where Will Ferrell's character took one look at uh, Queen Latifah. No, not even. No, it wasn't even Queen Latifah. It t- took a look at, I forget her name, but yeah. it's kind of. Uh, well, like, yeah, somebody like Queen Latifah. Yeah. And just immediately fell madly in love. It's like. I I don't know I I like I I feel like especially with these kids being zoomers who actually have smartphones that can work in the sewer for some reason <laughs> I, I feel like their societal beauty standards would be okay I, like okay we we showed that one chart of the different uh, April O'Neils 
Yeah. We agreed that like, okay, race spending questions aside. Um, if uh, she is, you know, I would believe he could fall in love and have a crush, immediate crush on the one from the last car, uh, cartoon series on Nickelodeon. Yeah, I could believe that. Yeah. I don't know. I just, just for me, like she seriously looks like, does not look like she's a, if she's a teenager, she need, like her parents need to. Uh, I, I'm, body body positive April. <laughs> yes, body positivity April. Yeah. Which, as somebody who has a lifelong struggle with his weight, I know it isn't as easy as just declaring that. But you you shouldn't necessarily like glamorize it. Yeah. 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 Uh, glorify it. Yeah. Yeah, and I can, I, yeah. This isn't to say that a heavy set character shouldn't, you know, can't be a love interest. It's just that it would be more like you would fall in love with their personality, which would not be an immediate zing moment. Right. Yeah. That 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 is something that that would happen over time. Yeah. But they needed a reason for Leonardo to suddenly stop being the brakes on their crazy train. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. But uh, so yeah, they they have a fight scene after April's uh, scooter gets stolen. Um, she's reporting for the school newspaper. Uh, or no, she's trying to make a blog because uh, she used to be in video, but she projectile vomited out of nerves when she got a chance to be on the school AV club. Yeah, and that that scene went on just a little too long. And they called back to it again at the end of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. But uh, so, so she she's been investigating the the crimes committed by Superfly and his gang. Right. And Which, she has managed to piece together enough to figure out. Oh, they have these associations. Right, and uh, and so they, and we we actually. Uh, were shown that clip uh, from the is that that montage where they're busting into all the the crime people's hideouts and beating everybody up, which is that was a pretty cool little sequence. I I, I will admit. Yeah, like because basically, um, e for all four of these break-ins, one of them is taking point each time, and they have animated it so that they just inter intercut between the different fights very seamlessly. Yeah, that's. I was, that was probably the best scene in the whole movie. Yeah, an old boy scene. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so then they they find out um, who. Uh, what, oh God, I'm trying to remember. <laughs> so well, they, much of this they, movie's a blank. <laughs> yeah, so they they find out that uh, they find out where Superfly is meeting with someone, so they show up instead. Right, and Superfly is. They're actually way more understanding than they should be. That there are four mutants there. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm gonna make up a gangster name. That Fat Tony had mutants on his crew. Cool. <laughs> when, as far as they know, they are the only mutants. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. Little little plot hole there. <laughs> well, there's a, there's a lot of little things like that. Yeah. So okay. So the. Uh, let's let's just go through our rundown of the plot because we're we're closer to done than we should be. Uh yes, yeah. <laughs> so so then the turtles um, meet up with uh, meet up with Superfly's gang, and we learned that um, which one is the pig? Is it Bebop or Rocksteady? Uh, Bebop is the pig. Okay. Yeah. So Bebop has pierced nipples and is voiced by Seth Rogen. Yeah. Uh, and then they kept showing his uh, man tits, so you know. Yeah, they were obsessed with with nipples in this movie. Yeah, we'll get to yeah. the milking in a minute. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so they go out and they have a night of fun with these fellow mutants, and they feel some camaraderie. And it turns out that Superfly is going to use his the super genius he inherited from his daddy Baxter Stockman to uh, make a device that will turn every organism on Earth into a mutant. Mm -hmm. Which that just seems like a recipe for a complete disaster because you're going to have suddenly have an ecosystem that's all top order uh, creatures. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> well, something tells me he didn't think that far ahead. <laughs> no, he just hates humans because they killed his daddy, which I I, I get it. Yeah. It's part of their forced parallel between Superfly and Splinter. Yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, then the, and then in a scene that really adds nothing to the movie whatsoever, besides an excuse for Splinter to be heroic, uh, the turtles get kidnapped by the people at the start of the movie. And the whole time, the whole movie, it's been a running gag. If the if the humans catch you, they'll they'll milk you for your for your mutant blood. They'll milk you. They'll milk you. They'll milk yeah. you. Why does it always go to milking, Dad? We don't even have nipples. And then, yeah. what happens? What what is the t what is the German mad scientist whose last name is Utram as like a continuity nod do? Mm. Poke them to the milking machine. Yes, and starts milking their blood. Which, like, you would think that it would be, they'd use a different word, like drain, collect, yeah. siphon. No, just had to force the stupid joke. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 my eyes rolled so hard that, that, that my, the, my eyeballs went into the back of my head that whole yeah. time. Just, it's just like, yeah. Yeah, and then um, so th then there's like a little bit of there isn't really a moral dilemma here because it never is like there's never really a chance that they'll go with Superfly because Superfly reveals his evil in the first ep in the first meeting they have. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, and then his other his mutant family is they're kind of starting to go mm, maybe maybe this isn't such a good idea. Yeah, like killing everyone. Hmm. I mean, the yeah. turtles say that humans are pretty cool, so maybe we should go along with that. Yeah. And also, there's a there's a chase scene where they transition from Hey, uh, the original one, da, 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 da. and then it and then when the it kicks into high gear, it turns into that meme He Man version of it. Yeah. I, I I just I I I is this a generational thing that we're we're just not getting it, or 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 is Seth Rogen just doesn't know comedy anymore or never knew it knew it in the first place? I well let's let's get to the end of this. Okay, so, okay. So <laughs> the, the turtles decide to stop Superfly, and so they have a fight. And I was actually kind of looking forward to this because the whole movie, you know, they've been building up Superfly. Like, like he's literally a Superfly. Like, he's got one yeah. big buff arm and one clawed arm. Yeah. Right, no, one, one hand that's kind of normal, but he's, like, really messed up and weird. But he can, like, lift a, a truck, fully loaded truck, and fly away with it. Yeah. So I was like, okay, we're going to get to see a cool fight sequence between the Turtles and Superfly. That will make this experience worth it. No, I said all of his buddies turn on him with light prodding. Yeah. And, and then yeah. And then proceed to uh, knock him into the bay where he comes out as a giant attack on Titan monster and they reference attack on Titan for the second time in the movie and proceed to something something I was having a hard time paying attention at that point. They they get um uh the a April gets like the reverse mutagen because she stole one of the 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 motorcycles from the TCRI guys in the one of the earlier scenes mm. and then she gets it to the turtles and then they're like okay well how are we gonna get this in there and then and then that's when Donatello has the the attack on Titan idea and then and the whole whole mishmash sequence of them trying and failing to do it and then then they finally do it and, yeah the day is saved and and splinter makes out with a bug woman yes and uh and then they and april goes on tv and says no the turtles are really good guys they're trying to stop everything and, and also and, <laughs> yeah uh, and the unnecessary callback yeah yeah. And uh and good to see you, Ninja. Hey Ninja. Um <laughs> Yes, uh, um 
April O'Neil uh, puking her guts out. Yeah, <laughs> I, I can't say I ever expected to see a movie where uh, April O'Neil, even if it is kind of April O'Neil in name only, yeah. uh, projectile vomits, much less a movie where it happens twice as a callback gag. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, so the day is saved, and uh, the all the mutants are living together in the sewer lair. Uh, and the turtles are now going to high school. Yeah, Splinter made out with a bug woman. You you heard me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah. yeah, yeah, and and all of the mutants are living with them in the sewers. Mm -hmm. Although logically, since they're all roughly the same age, because like a lot of those mutants were literally like fetuses in jars. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you would think like why aren't Bebop and Rocksteady and Mondo Gecko going to high school? Yeah, I I don't know, can't help you there. But they're all living down in the sewers now. Yep. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Ninja. Uh, yeah. So here's the strange thing about this movie. A, so a lot of Ninja Turtles movies could be summed up as a gang feud between. A ninja and a rat. Yes. Like, there isn't, like, you know, if, uh, let's say in the 1990 Ninja Turtles movie, let's say the Turtles lost. It would have been bad that, you know, the Foot Clan would have continued to dominate crime in the city, but it wouldn't have been the end of the world. Right. Yeah. Uh, set, you know, second movie, Secret of the Use. Super Shredder, he he died by having a, you know, by having a heavy object dropped on him. He was not a threat to the world order. No, that was that was a very uh, unfulfilling sequence. There. <laughs> no, <laughs> yes, yes, it was. Yeah, yeah. This is a turtles movie that where the premise was we have to stop the literal destruction of humankind. Yeah, and it and it's. I, I never got that feeling. Yeah, the entire, it, the, yeah. Because the movie does not take itself seriously in the slightest. No, it doesn't. Um, and in the 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 turtles don't take themselves seriously either. You know, when you watch it, I, like you know that that one scene where they're they're all talking to each other and they're like talking over each other and and and, just, and I'm just like, shut up, shut up, shut up. They do that constantly. Yeah, um, and yeah, it it could have been charming, but the the way they do it here it just is obnoxious. Yeah, they it it was obviously like the director just put the four kid actors in the recording booth together and they just, and said, "All right, let's start talking to each other." Yep. Yeah. There, there's. I also kind of feel like this would have been better off as this first season of a Ninja Turtles show for. Nickelodeon than an actual movie because yeah. there's like a pretty big character there's a bunch of big character shifts when you really think about it because you know Splinter learns to trust humans uh, but the bigger thing is boy it sure didn't take much for Superfly's minions who he was their literal father figure to decide to turn on him because the turtles were kind of cool yeah that 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 was uh that's a that is a major leap in logic right there, <laughs> even for a kids movie. <laughs> yeah, like this would have been better served having the turtles develop a relationship with these mutants, and then and if it had been a season of a show, you could have had more point to the evil corporation because like they bothered to make a point of showing the head of the security for the evil uh, company, you know, losing his eye to Superfly. So you think, oh, this is going to be some sort of callback. No, no, yeah, yeah, and and of course, and like you were mentioned before, the 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 lady, the German lady, her last name's Utrom, which okay, they're obviously setting up that she's an Utrom, yep. which for yeah. those of you who didn't watch the two uh, thousands uh, Ninja uh, Turtles cartoon, or really, if you're only familiar with the original, that's basically Krang's species, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and they're they're the ones who created the ooze. 
Yep. Ooze. 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 So yeah, like I, I, I wanted to like this movie because I feel like it had an A plus concept. Because mm-hmm. it would have been different. Like, like I said, most Turtles movies, except for that one 2000s CGI one that was kind of questionably in continuity with the cartoon at the time. Yeah. Uh, like most of them are just that shredder uh, of gang war. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's a um, you know the the family feud rivalry. You know the the family rivalry between uh, the 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 Hamato Yoshi clan and the and the Oroku Saki clan. Yeah, it's yeah, it, it's a, it's an easy little you know concept to to get around. You also don't usually have like a moral dilemma for the turtles to face. Like it's not, it's not, there's never the question of do we fight the shredder? It's how do we fight the shredder? Yeah. So having a charismatic superfly, uh, leading a group of mutants living on their own terms and seeming more free, that the turtles legitimately have the opportunity to really think about if they want to join them or not. Yeah. Like you have to have a couple of more meetings before you decide to reveal the genocide plan. Uh, yeah, yeah. You you got to build up some build up some camaraderie with them a little, you know, before yeah, before before the yeah the before the evil plan gets revealed. And they're like, oh, wait a second, I didn't sign up for that. Yeah. Or you know, oh, Superfly, maybe he has a point because, like, you know, in a TV show, you could have had something like, I don't know. Leonardo getting into a fight with April mm-hmm. and him being hurt and deciding that maybe humans aren't that great and being tempted or something. Right. Yeah. Or, or, you know, something with Raphael, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, Ninja says, uh, the, the feud also emphasizes the Ninja aspect of the turtles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Now we mentioned this before. This movie is very sloppy. Now, there's an aspect where that's intentional because the art style is designed to look like the scribbles in a teen sketchbook. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's um, it's it's the the Spider Verse animation style. Yeah. yeah, which it's funny. I was on my laptop watching the first half of it because my the the the, the Paramount Plus app wouldn't load to my Xbox. Then I got back and watched the back half of it. It looked way worse on the big screen. I can't imagine watching this in the theaters. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, although I will say, in, in 4K, it doesn't look as clunky, but it's still just like it. It, it looks cheap. I don't. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of it. Yeah. The the art style re- really reminded me of the 2000s game Psychonauts, mm-hmm. where they I've had like a lot of little in, sketches yeah. and doodles and things all over the place. Oh yeah, yeah. I've heard of it, but I never played it. <laughs> a lot of people didn't. I, it's, it's why it took 20 years to get a sequel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. But the sloppy parts are, there's lots of little like continuity and logic questions. Like um, Daniel, like, uh, when you, uh, when uh, I, I was watching it before you did, I told you like pause when, so in April was wanting to interview the turtles for her blog or whatever. Yeah. She had a list of questions. Oh right, yeah, and one, yeah, one of them was uh, the, you know, the the guy, you know, the, the the guy with the red red bandana guy. Does he have anger? Always had anger issues or whatever. Like, um, uh, movie. Like, con- hey, Mister Continuity Guy, April was not in the scene to watch Raphael fight those mobsters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She would have no concept of him as the angry guy because he was not angry in front of her before this scene. Yeah. Yeah. It. it um. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what the other. Yeah. The other. The other questions were kind of dumb. Like, I, I know one of them. Do you like, have acid blood? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have acid blood? You know. Did. You know. Can you get COVID? Are you Are you responsible for COVID? What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And do you know that that was the result of the writers sitting around and just like coming up, like, you know, egging each other on? Like, what kind, what can we put down in April's question book as Easter eggs? Yeah. Yeah. It just, yeah. 
Yeah. So, so as a movie, it should have been a TV show. I've, I've, I, I was kind of thinking that to start with, but now I'm just convinced. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Yeah, they, yeah, they should have just done this as a TV show, and you know, put it on. Too many ideas. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, and I just, I don't, I don't like how the turtles are portrayed. I don't like. I don't like how Splinter was portrayed. I don't. I, I, I'm a bit of a turtles purist, so seeing their their origins and everything getting jumbled up and completely changed like that, I'm just like, no, I don't like it. I don't like it. See, at first I was kind of more into this movie than you were, but I was just worn down by the by the waste of everything because like every time they had a serious scene, they would have the turtles uh, ad lib. Yeah. And you get the impression that it's like, okay, it is realistically how a group of close friends or brothers do talk to each other. Yeah. But that doesn't make it entertaining to watch or to yeah. keep doing it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, no. Yeah. So, so to quote, uh, to quote the critic, it stinks. Yes. <laughs> You had a cool original concept, and you Seth Rogen it. Yeah, yes. Keep Seth Rogen away from your away from franchises. And they're having him work on a Darkwing Duck. Please let that be one of the things that got canceled with the uh, with all the force majeure from the writers' strike and SAG strike. Please. Yeah, yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. These Darkwing Duck is to me what Ninja Turtles is. <laughs> Daniel, please. Yeah, please yeah. Leave it alone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, we we cannot recommend this movie. Uh, it's on it's on Paramount Plus, but, um, you know, I wouldn't want to bother with it. Watch two episodes of Star Trek instead. Yes. <laughs> Which Star Trek? Yeah, pick one that was made before 2003. Most of them will be better than this. Uh, yes, exactly, and um, and uh, and I uh, to put a final uh, cherry on the top of this, I would rather watch Turtles three than this movie. Oof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>